Paul, I feel so honored to be the first guest on this show. I'm so excited. <laughs> you got a full plate, Gabby. You're, I mean, you're the only person I know other than myself who has more kinetic energy, um, just runs at 200% at all time. Every time I speak to you mm -hmm. or see you online, I feel like you're just moving at the speed of light. And um, I want to know, A, how you do it, because I need all the tips I can get, and B, um, what's on the hot plate right now? All of our lives, all of our professions, everything's changed. Um, what's the priority professionally to you right now? Great question. So it's funny, we have a joke here at <clears throat> Gabby Bernstein Inc., which is uh, if you work here, you have to move at the speed of Gabby, <laughs> which is a lot of pressure. And thankfully, we've done a lot of uh, hard work rehiring an entire new team that actually likes to work in that way. Because if, if you have people that aren't, uh, aren't either capable or interested in being at that speed, it can be really yeah. detrimental, yeah. right? So I've had the the privilege of hiring some great people that work at the speed of Gabby and comfortably. Uh, but at the same time, that also requires a lot of slowing down. I have a mantra, which is I speed up by slowing yes. down. So it's a big one. Yeah. And, and I know that you have that as well, because your self care yeah. routine, obviously, we'd see that from your latest yeah. book and from just who you are on uh, as a presence has a lot to do with meditation and has a lot to do with exercise and obviously physical yeah. care. So without that, I wouldn't be able to move at the speed yeah. of Gabby. But I want to be honest with you and all of your listeners. For most of my career, I worked at the speed of Gabby with these with these regimented downtime practices that I taught and lived by. But for many reasons, uh, having been a survivor of PTSD, having just a lot of uh, internal conflict, no matter how much meditation I would do, no matter how much I would exercise, it was constantly almost like this yo-yo of work, you know, be so out there and move, move, yeah. move, and then slow, slow, slow. It wasn't, it wasn't truly what it is yeah. today, which is a genuine adjustment of my nervous system, which actually is not allowing me to move fast. It's allowing me to create right. intuitively and in an inspired way. And I believe that when we're inspired and we do have that channel to be that that vessel through which whatever it is that we're here to bring forth needs to come yeah. through, then we can really do more uh, and and relax, do less and attract uh, more and get a the lot The world has actually recently forced us to slow down. I mean, multi multitasking was my MO. I still yep. do it, but COVID, you know, I hope to take some blessings out of all this. Like you always say, the universe does have our back and is guiding us. And it's just a question of seeing those signs and utilizing them. And th th exactly what you're saying, taking that time to breathe will open up other doors, creativity and things like that, because otherwise you're just running on a treadmill. Oh yeah, and you'll burn out. And, and I think that for many people, particularly our fellow New Yorkers, in many ways, a lockdown was exactly yeah. what they needed. I'm sure many of your patients maybe have even said to you, well, it, you know, as, as difficult as this is, it's been really yeah. good for me because we've never been forced to slow down, be still, not multitask our brains out, not constantly be on the go, traveling, running, dining, yeah. whatever it may be. Because let's, you know, let's face it, even even having a social life yeah. is a job at times. If you're if you're a New Yorker and all of the things that go along with that. So while it's been a really difficult time, I think that there are a lot of blessings that many people have been able to take from it. And if you haven't actually seen it that way, this is a moment in time where yeah. you can. Just even with skincare, the first two three months of lockdown, everyone's skin got better. Because they were stopped multitasking oh, 20 different things, makeup, makeup removers, serums, gels, toners. Their skin got better. It really wasn't until, you know, the mask knee, the, the wearing masks and the stress started affecting the skin. But there was a honeymoon period for a lot of people. And they were like, I just slowed down my skincare. I simplified. I, I, I made it simpler. And again, I think this is this translates to, to every aspect uh, of our life. But tell me, tell me what, what's the project or what you can tell us of maybe a project you're working on now? What, what, what's the Gabby to come? 
There, oh my God. Well, there's so much Gabby to come. But there's one thing I want to say about the makeup and the quarantine. <laughs> I'm probably one of the few people, I mean, not, not anyone who started, who's starting bigger endeavors during the no. pandemic on Zoom. Unfortunately, I've had to wear more well, makeup now than I ever. I could use before. some right now. I know. <laughs> no, I was actually looking, I was going to say, I was going to compliment your jawline is looking excellent, my Thera. friend. Yeah. All that Althora is really kicking ass for you. Uh, so no, you look great. Um, but I've had more, uh, yeah, more makeup than ever before. And I got to say, I've, I have found some fantastic makeup brands that we can oh, talk I, about in a whole like other that. conversation. Uh, just unbelievable. Uh, I, I got to give a shout out to the to the KKW Beauty. Oh, I know it sounds right. crazy, but it's excellent. Absolutely. It's excellent. And um, and Victoria Beckham Beauty is clean and okay. Beautiful. You heard those anyway, people we'll from the guru herself. There I go. This is this is coming from oh, Gabby right. Bertzi, who really nobody cares about what makeup I right. wear, but that's the truth. Uh, so, uh, but I I have a lot of big things that are coming, and one beautiful thing that actually came out of being in this pandemic quarantine. I, as you know, have been in full-blown quarantine because I've been trying to conceive throughout this experience. So I've been treating myself like a high-risk okay. person, which has uh, probably benefited me in many ways from the standpoint of, of creation. So I've been home with my 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 family. Uh, thankfully, I, I do have childcare. I will absolutely thank the Lord. And a beautiful that, home, a beautiful to environment to be in. I'm in a nice environment uh, outside of the city at this time. And what we're doing is uh, I started realizing, okay, I don't have my <clears throat> my stage. My stage was taken from me. And that was the case for many people. Anyone that is a artist or a performer in any way, and as a motivational speaker, my stage was taken yeah. from me. And while that wasn't the primary part of my vocation in the sense of how we run our business, it was my it is my art and it is what I love to do most, it which is, is be live yeah. on stage. And have that audience and anyone that you've watched, you know, any 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 late night yeah. person, you can see that they just struggled for months. So just like them, <clears throat> just like Jimmy Fallon, I had to figure <laughs> it out. So I <laughs> so I started uh, going on Instagram and just doing what I love most, which is just random Q and A's with people. So I started this weekly show called yes. Dear Gabby at twelve thirty on Instagram Live. I randomly was just taking whoever would request to join from all over the world. We've had people from India and Nairobi wow. and England and Australia. I mean, across the world, it's beautiful. All the time, men, women, all walks of life, people just coming to get support. On these on the show, I have just for an hour, I'll riff on whatever it is I can do yeah. to support people and dear Gabby yeah. them. Well, this dear Gabby thing, took off because anything that you do in the pursuit of service, love, and inspiration will have an yeah. impact. It will. It's bottom line. And now it's being sold as a podcast, uh, also out to be sold for a TV thing Amazing. at some point. I think we'll be podcast first. And so Dear Gabby is the future like here, it. man. We actually had to, uh, we had to uh, um, ch change some some legal docs and things so now we're gonna we have another entity called dear gabby inc like it's just there's yeah. a whole whole thing happening here that happened by accident yeah. but happened and it may not have happened without some of the tragedies that have fallen upon us it took a certain direction in that way and like 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 any successful person it was a matter of finding the cracks seeing the opportunity and running with it and, you know, I think that the interesting thing is, is that sometimes we think it is that we have to go find it, but it finds exactly. us when we are just exactly. really aligned with what's yeah. inspiring to us. It, hence why we're here yeah. right now. This is coming out of yeah. you doing interviews Absolutely. with people on your IG Live, which we did together. I didn't think I'd write another book a couple of years ago. It's crazy. I'm actually really glad that you're doing a podcast because I think it's fun to listen to so many dermatologists on other people's yeah. podcasts. Uh, if you're interested in in skincare and and your yeah. youth and and just looking good, it's so fascinating well, to hear. I just want to mix it up because I wanted to have doctors, I wanted to have musicians, I wanted to have motivational people, I wanted to have fitness people. I want to bring my mm -hmm. expertise into the conversation and stop having it be like a secret. You know what I mean, it's yeah. part, and this is part of the, our next question because you know. How we view the world and how we view ourselves are very important things. That's what you deal with. Uh, our visual cues of ourselves and other people are just part of that puzzle. And I don't think we need to, de to deny it and make it a taboo thing. I think we need to approach it and be healthy and honest about it. 
And, you know, you're someone that speaks to people from all walks of life, shapes, sizes, genders. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you hear it all. So, you know, I think the most important question that I had for you in this podcast is how do you deal with some of the difficulties that people have knowing that self body image, not just aesthetically, but also functionally. Some people are handicapped. Some people think they're ugly. Some people, they want something different from what they see in the mirror and how they carry out their days. And I'm sure this is part of your journey helping people. Tell me a little something about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, I've had, I've had the privilege of working with people with all kinds of different physical disabilities, uh, mental disabilities. Uh, and, and sometimes it's the folks that have struggled the most that are the most profoundly egoless yeah. humans. I have a pen pal. I've never really talked about him before, so this is kind of nice. I've never talked about him. Uh, about, uh, let's say it was 2015, so I guess about oh, a little over five years ago, maybe longer, I went for my first time for a tour in Australia. I was in Melbourne giving a talk, <clears throat> and there was this man in the audience who was in a wheelchair and and really disabled. And I wasn't exactly sure what his disability was, but I could see him struggling. And he had a, a friend with him that brought him there. And uh, I saw him and I kept looking at him. And during the meditation, the group meditation, my just sometimes my, my hands are like antennas and I just will let whatever energy is telling me to flow, I'll let, just let it go. So you know, sometimes when you see preachers or teachers that are in spiritual space, their hands yeah. will go up or you'll see image. It, it's not, it's a thing, it's a real thing. So you kind of can hold the energy of the room yeah. like this when yeah. you're in that channeled state. So my hand goes up and I'm just sending all this energy to this guy. This, 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 he's probably in his late twenties, thirties. And then during the book signing, I see him at like the end of the line or trying to get to, and then I see him leave. And I think to myself, I would never make this guy wait on line. You know, like, let's just get him in and get him right to the front of the line. And then for some reason, I see him come off the elevator again with his friend. And I look at him and I said, get over here. Come on up to the front of the line. He comes to the front of the line and we take a photo and I sign his book. And I give him my email address. And I don't do this. I don't give away my email address to people. I just mean, but I said, listen, man, I don't know why, but I have a feeling we're supposed to stay in touch. So I give him my email address. He then says goodbye. The next day he emails me the photo of the two of us. We've been pen pals yeah. ever since. We write like two to three times a week. This is Mark. He's in Melbourne. We have the same the same thread from the very beginning. The subject line is Mark yeah. in Melbourne. And my point is, is that Mark suffers probably more than anybody yeah. I know. He he can't he can't breathe on his own. He can't he writes with his eyes. So he types to me. I have no idea how this happens, but he writes these epic. He's, he's writing a book that I want yeah. to work on quadriplegic and how do you write with your eye i mean i mean frank adaptation frank or Paul adaptation adaptation yeah. i have no idea what that, that means he learns how to do things that he would never uh, oh i thought you meant like the eye thing oh, was an adaptation but uh, somehow he he has this 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 way of typing through through his thoughts and his eyes i've unbelievable in any case my point is is that with all his suffering, he's actually had such a, a greater sense of spiritual connection. And so I, I think that my, my, what I see often is people who have, have sort of, uh, low level yeah. suffering or, uh, just sort of, s sort of discomfort often can struggle even yeah. more. We call that affluent because, problems. Uh, yes, exactly. Affluent <laughs> problems. But, but, but that doesn't make anyone suffering no, any less than someone doesn't. else. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't because you could be in the f best physical shape and be be thriving and in the most debilitating yeah. pain and suffering from growing up with poor attachment, yeah. growing up with trauma. Body dysmorphia. People suffer. You know, like, this is the balance I deal with all the time because I want people to make healthy choices about the way they see themselves in the mirror, not unhealthy. And I think you know, there's there's an appropriate but bad stereotype about aesthetic cosmetic rejuvenation really only deals with that population. It's really about helping people make mm. healthy choices to empower them because when people feel good about themselves, the, the, their, their relationship with the universe changes as you say. You know
you know, I see, I see some of these before and afters. Like I saw a before and after that you did on your Instagram and I'm like, hell yes. Like if somebody has the means to be able to support themselves in that way, whether it be through dermatological processes or whether it be through, uh, losing weight or whatever it yeah. may be, it, it's, it, there's, there's, you, you can easily say, oh, you can over spiritualize things and say, oh, I'm not my body. Right, right. I'm, but, but you still are dwelling Absolutely. in this space. Yeah. You still have, the opportunity to uh, adjust the way you feel about yourself in whatever form that may be. So whether it be through uh, a procedure or a diet or a uh, a way of, of that is a healthy way of getting yourself to feel great and confident, I'm behind it. But the the idea of body dysmorphia is often really coming back to the root cause condition of somebody who is just not happy being in the presence of who Correct. they are. Correct which is what I yeah. work on. And you know, I think one of the things that, I mean, years ago, before I started getting involved in more spiritual teachings and meditation, all these things, I was one of those naysayers. I looked at people who were function more in the spiritual realm that, oh, they only want to deal with the inside. It's all inside, inside, you know, like we live in the real world, people like people have to look in the mirror. Unfortunately, we, as humans, people do make judgments on what they see visually uh, from other feedback and things. And, you know, I think one of the most attractive things about your teachings is that you're an authentic, real person. And needless to say, you are also uh, not difficult on the eyes either. <laughs> you, you know, you are someone that's very accessible to people physically, emotionally, spiritually, most importantly. And I think people need that package. It's a part of an authenticity. There are some unnamed spiritual leaders out there where you feel like they, they're from a certain country, they live a certain way, they're not like us. And I think you're like mm -hmm. us because you embrace the whole package. I just thought that like us weekly thing, like spiritual teachers, they're just like us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Right. No, I know exactly what you mean. I think that the, that what I have found is the most attractive thing about people is their authenticity, yeah. their willingness to be vulnerable, yeah. their willingness to tell the truth, their willingness to get grounded. You, there's, oh, there's so many experiences in my life where I've just fallen in love with a stranger just as, you know, just energetically because of their, because they've shown me their yeah. truth. And that's actually something I teach when I teach other spiritual teachers I, in trainings. I say the most valuable gift you can give is your authentic Absolutely. truth, because that's all the world really wants to see from yeah. you. So, and 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 you know it. I mean, there may be people who who may struggle with their with their physical appearance, but then the second that they drop into who they really yeah. are, they become the most yeah. beautiful person in the room. Do you think that this has changed? I mean, I, I've found that this this need for authenticity. I mean, I, I think people have always said we want authenticity, but I think people used to like to put people on pedestals, whether it's politicians or royalty or rich and famous people, celebrities. And I think, I think social media um, has really kind of changed what the public demands. I mean, there was recently stuff about celebrities not admitting they do certain things. And, you know, I, I think the, the world wants really does want more authenticity now how do you how do you find that what plays with digital media and all this well i think that you know it's so funny i think that there's this instagram story of who you are and then there's the true yes. story of who you are but it's those of us and i'm speaking about you no, and yeah. me and other people that i identify with <clears throat> that have had the willingness to be who yeah. we are on public platforms, which I, I can say to the world right now that Dr. Paul Frank is who as he is, is Gabby, <laughs> as am as I, as Gabby. am I, and as are. But that's what resonates, and I think that whether it's through social media, whether it's through a podcast interview, whether it's in, in you know in your doctor's office one on one with an individual, that truth has to be what comes through. Because otherwise, for me, I'll speak for myself, and I know that you agree with me. It's far too exhausting to be anything yeah. but that. Any time that I've yeah. been produced, like uh, done an interview or done a done a show or something where I've been tried to be produced, I, I look at the people I'm like I'm done. I'm out. Like I, I can't. Like, you can't make me be anything that I'm not. And uh, it, it, it's just it's 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 so it's so comforting to By get the way, comfortable. Being it's still me. exhausting to be me and to be you, and it's not because I'm so great. Mm, it's a lot of work. It's just yeah. I put an enormous amount of work into it. So to just stay in my lane and be my version of me, I'm tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you, you're putting a lot out and you're giving yeah. a lot. 
that is and and to be a person in the world anyone that's watching or listening that is a positive presence in the world yeah that can feel like a, a big job in whatever and all of us have the responsibility of showing up in that way we all are the media yeah. now we have everyone we are the media now that that's the thing and i think um you know it pu it pushes people in the right direction um you know I, I when i was in training we were supposed to be like white jacket put the veil of doctor patient relationship there was less intimacy in terms of the relationship I, and i think my relationship with my patients and my audience has really made that better not that i don't want to be professional and maintain certain boundaries professional but i want my patients to know a little bit about myself i want i want to know about them i mean the good news for me mm -hmm. i i've been in practice 20 years i have patients from 20 years ago and it mm -hmm. that's to me that's the fun part of the journey mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I assume Absolutely. you have people that you communicate with from your early days of small groups, right? It's I, Paul, it is the coolest it thing is. to get a email from somebody who 15 years ago was in my studio apartment yeah. with the cockroaches and the, and the crackers and like whatever. And like the meditation music that sat on the floor with me meditating. Like I'm not, I'm not kidding about the cockroaches, yeah. like my West village studio apartment that just was yeah. with whatever it was in a yeah. walk up. And, and these people re reach out to me and they're like, Gabby, I just got engaged or I'm, I'm, I've had a baby. It's just, so heartwarming to connect to these people, to grow up with them in it's many great. ways. So it's funny, last New Year's Eve, I believe I put a word up on my social media and I said that this was the word of 2020 and the word was grit. And it was, it was a word that I'd heard many times before, but it was a conversation I had on vacation with a friend of mine who lives on California. We were both at the same vacation spot. We took a long walk on the beach, just talking about our lives, our careers, our personal lives, and just what it takes to be us, best version of us. And mm -hmm. accepting that we're both very lucky people and blessed people with health and good livings and loving families, but that like life is just a lot of work. You know, and that word mm -hmm. grit represents so many words from adaptability to resiliency to constantly having to pivot and weave and jump hurdles. And it reflects hard work. And I think that's also one of the things um, that attracted me to a lot of your workings is that you you admit this yourself, that the journey's hard. Um, it never stops. It's really where a lot of my pro aging theories came about with age that, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be aging doesn't have to be a bad thing. But to stay vital, and it's not just about looks, it's just about your vitality, it's going to take work. And you just have to find a way to enjoy the ride. For me, a big part of this epiphany um, was transcendental meditation. It got me to slow down. It got me to look at life in this way. And for you, I want to know when that like kind of aha moment was, when you realized that like this is how life has to be. This past summer. Really? Really? I thought you were going to say in your darkest of days, the book Miracles, like 15 years ago, you saw the light. Really? This summer? So, well, let's let's get let's go back. So so I got sober 15 years ago, which was really a big catalyst for becoming a spiritual student and spiritual teacher. Along that way, I have had many bottoms uh, uh, from remembering trauma to gastrointestinal issues that took me down to just all the PTSD symptoms that really can affect a human. But the real awakening was when I witnessed the culmination of 15 years of spiritual growth and personal growth fall, click, fall into place, just standing outside in nature, yeah. looking at my home, standing down the hill from my house, looking up at my house, just in the sun by myself, just in awe of the of my ability in that moment to feel the air, to breathe, to smell things, to be present. Because the as someone who, and I think most people in their own ways have experienced some kind of trauma. Yeah. But I, you know, if you if if you have a uh, a, a real insecure attachment in your childhood and you have uh, just uncomfortable experiences throughout your life, it can be really debilitating to your ability to be present. 
So while I worked really hard to be present, there was major moments of presence when I was on stage or when I was writing or when I was, I couldn't be present in my, with, with my husband or whoever, with a close friend, I couldn't be in the moment. And so standing this summer and with all of my 15 years of devotional therapeutic practices, committed, brave, brave, brave work that I've done to undo the experiences from my past so that I could stand in this present moment really, really grounded was just such a fascinating experience. Yeah. I stood there and I was like, oh, this is what this is. This is what I've been looking right. for. This is what I've been working towards. So, and I'm actually writing a whole book about this now, about how we can undo the past so we can stand free in yeah. the present. And that's something that that really does require our bravery and our devotion. Yes. And, it, and, it, and it's work. And it, it, when I say yeah. it's work, it's work that you can look back and say, thank God I, I had the ability yeah. to do well, that. Well, sometimes we have to be, I'm thankful for, for some of the toughest times of my life. I wasn't thankful at the time. I'm thankful no, now. No. It's not about like certain things I don't want to let go. I don't want to undo, I want to rework them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I want the current challenges. I want to look back in five years and be like, I used that in the right way, despite the challenges. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at everything mm -hmm. right now. And I try and find my life journey is a, a cumulative effort of trying to find things that help me stay in my in the zone. You know, that 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 state that they tell you in transcendental meditation, where you're just kind of like what an athlete does when they're performing their best or how you when everyone is performing their a best. flow state. You yeah. Know? What yeah. um what yeah. combinate do you is there a certain practice or something you do that makes you feel like that best version like I, I got this yeah. Gabby's got this yeah so I do practice transcendental meditation I also meditate with uh I have so many different practices but I want to share some of them just because they're yeah, very valuable please. for people so I I meditate with binaural music because I practice a therapeutic practice called EMDR which is eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing, yeah. which is excellent for anyone who has PTSD or anyone who has anything that's just an energetic disturbance that they want to yeah. work out. And if it's something minor, like, oh, you know, I had a had a had some a fear of heights, that could be kicked in a few sessions of EMDR. Yeah. So hmm. I have had this fantastic experience doing that. And then on your own, you can practice by meditating with binaural music, which stimulates the both both sides of the yeah. brain, which ultimately allows you to process unresolved emotions and memories that that might be otherwise implicit right. memories that you can then bring out in a safe way, or just process without even actually having to recall the experience or the memory. So there's that. Then I do somatic experiencing therapy, which is all about getting back into the body. And really, it's a, a work that's been founded by Dr. Peter mm. Levine. And then the most fascinating thing that I'm getting trained in at the moment is a, a therapeutic process called IFS, which is internal family systems. Uh, if you if you follow my work, you're just going to see more and more of that show up in my work because this was the real aha moment for me. I'd been practicing it for seven years, but then it clicked. And the concept being that, and it's very it's a very spiritual therapeutic process. That's why I think I've I've leaned into yeah. it so much. And the founder is Dick Schwartz, who I'm actually interviewing tomorrow. He's just my guru. And he it's all about really being self-led, which is what many spiritual theories have around being led by your higher self or leaning into the voice of spirit or a universal voice, but really recognizing that we have this, this self, this, this higher self that's always yeah. with us and that that self can be the carer for all these other parts of ourselves that really are disorganized or fragmented or or yeah. extreme so we can we can care yeah. for ourselves we can bring ourselves back you, to you're constantly learning in this process i see trying so many different things not just for yourself but for everybody else yes. but i want yes is there a is there a practice a routine something that you do that doesn't involve the spiritual journey like is it like you cook mm. a certain food for your child is it a certain walk mm. a path that you found behind your house recently that helps you kind of deal with the challenges like you know for me i know when i'm working when i'm working and things are going right things are almost like everything is going on around me it's in slow motion but i know that i'm sharing my expertise 
I'm so I'm sharing things with my family. I'm having good experiences with people. That's that's my zone. That's when I know that what maybe went wrong for me last night or that morning. That's that walks me out of it. Do you have anything any practice? Yes, a hundred percent. I think that I think that there's there's a lot of answers to that question. One is that I think being in the constant state of I guess the best way to put it is shining the crystal that is me. Yes. Consi consistently really just saying, okay, what can I learn from that? Okay, how can I do that in a different way? That willingness allows me to have a bad morning yeah. and turn that bad morning into a divine yes. moment. So I've had, I've had, we've been, all been living through this really rough time. No matter what your circumstances are, you 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 could have suffered through this but i have made a commitment through this experience to just lean into what can i learn from that how can i feel better from that how can i give more from that and that doesn't mean that i don't allow myself to be bawling on the floor and letting something okay. out that's the pro that's part of the right. process but being here's the here's the, here's the answer being solution oriented rather than a fault finder rather than than yeah. seeking problems that solution oriented attitude, I think, is one of the keys to success personally and professionally uh, with your family, with every relationship you have. Yeah. That's uh, the answer. I, I think that that's, a, that's about the answer for the whole podcast. I mean, that was like, that's the best guidance that I've heard all day. Folk, be solution oriented. In fact, I'm going to start my day off like that. Before I, I let you go, Gabby, um, let me first thank you again so much for being the first guest. We have to, you're setting the pace now for the Pro Aging Podcast. Um, and my audience needs to hear most of all the platforms to find you on because there are so many and there are, I've been on each one. They're all so valuable. So please give us a little bit of a rundown. Well, I think the best place to find me would be GabbyBernstein.com. Uh, I'm also at Gabby Bernstein on all my social handles. That, but everything that, that you could need from me would be at GabbyBernstein.com. And, and then I have a bunch of books that you can just put yeah. my name into Amazon and Amazon will hook and you up with whatever you think yeah, you need. She <laughs> actually returns DMs to fans sometimes. It's unbelievable. I she do. I do. I, mean, I, I don't know when you do this, but like you are accessible to people. It's unbelievable. Hmm. Yeah, I think that I think that we connect to whoever it is that we're meant to find or meant to meet. So if I'm spending 20 minutes here looking at some DMs, that's a person I was supposed to connect with that, that day. Well, I appreciate you spiritually, professionally. You are beautiful inside and out. I can't wait to see you again. Unfortunately, we may be wearing masks, so this is the best we get for now. I, this is the best we get. And you know, I think that you and I starting podcasts is such a selfish thing because we're such extroverts and we just want to hang out with yeah. our friends. <laughs> and I do love to hear myself talk. I am a bit of a narcissist. I yeah. can't help it, but listen, I know who I am. Listen, we, you, we, we, me too, my <laughs> friend. That, but you did a good job of just letting me riff for a long <laughs> time. So <I> thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I love, love you. you thank too, you sweetie. for that. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now. So I'm making Paul bring me back because I wanted to talk about mental health and uh, anti-aging. So I have experienced in my own person, I've, we are all our own guinea pig, as you are, as I am, that I've experienced rejuvenation, resilient, physical resilience. I feel that in many ways, while I may not have the collagen I had 10 years ago, I feel I, I look better now than I did then because yes. my nervous system is in such a better place. My digestion yeah. is perfect. I sleep yeah. perfectly. I, I, and I believe all of this is the result of the devotional yes. work that I have done to regulate my nervous system. Because as a doctor, yeah. you can co-sign this, but stress is the number one cause it of is. aging. I would Whether imagine, it's molecular right? stress, I, I emotional is, right? stress. I mean, stress is a medical terminology, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. So in my own life, I have witnessed my bravery, willingness, ability to show up for my physical nervous system, change my entire physiology, my, uh, my, and, and, and of course it, it, a lot of this yeah. begins with the gut. So if you can yeah. really change your nervous system, the viscera Absolutely. will respond perfectly. 
And that then just really helps you properly eliminate yep. toxins, cleanse. And that does involve diet and that does involve detoxing and all the things that we need to do and, and skincare and all the things we need to do. But most importantly, having your body work on yep. your behalf. But that can only happen. I call this body optimization. It's allowing your body yep. to do what millions of years of evolution has worked hard to give you the gift of your body. And a lot of people are looking Correct. for drugs, pharmaceutical pills, juices, all these things to do what the body mm -hmm. can do for itself. You have to allow it, though. Mm -hmm. And again, the whole anti-aging yeah. culture, unfortunately, really plays into that you have to do something to fix aging, which mm -hmm. is why I, I like pro-aging, mm -hmm. because pro-aging is more of an empower, empowering concept to just allow your body to do that. And by mm -hmm. taking care of yourself, just like you said, is the key. Yeah, and the last thing I'll say is it's it's uh, it's coined the relaxation yeah. response by Herbert Benson, the relaxation response to your body's ability to rejuvenate as a result of being in a yes. relaxed state. Uh, so oh, I like let's that. just, we'll end All on right, that. Girl. That's nice. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye, honey.